Hi and welcome to Dojima podcast. Uh we here we will dive into different blockchain and cross chain uh, platforms. We will dive into the world of blockchain and this is episode 1 and we are joined by Vibo from uh, Clio Network. Hi Vibo. Hi hi Jaren. Hello Vibo. Yes, um I'm Esther. Um please it's good to have you here with us today. Um to kick off things, could you please give us an overview of Clio Network? So essentially, Clio Network, it's an uh, it's an SDK that allows a person to go ahead and share browsing history with organizations or other users. So the idea essentially is that that we are taking browsing history and converting it into an asset of a data class, which can then be used uh, for different purposes. And everywhere it's used for different purposes. it can uh, we go ahead and share tokens with the user when it gets used so essentially let's just say that uh, you go ahead on a website and then you share some computation based on your browsing history with that organization then you get to have some rewards uh, because you're sharing that information with them okay amazing like uh, if you remember i was at the january hackathon event but i get impressed every time i hear the idea It's, it's it's very wonderful i mean i can see the whole idea uh, it sets you it stands out in the whole blockchain landscape uh, yeah. so let's talk about uh, cross chain compatibility how does clio fit into this uh, cross chain ecosystem and how do you use dojima chain and what benefits do you see in utilizing dojima well cross chain is extremely important for us because uh, we don't want the token to lie in subs in a certain ecosystem um uh, especially with so many l1s and so many l2s we we want to be omnipresent and with that we want to be cross chain and that's why it's important for us to integrate uh, with as many dapps as possible that's only possible if we uh, use something like uh, dojima network because uh, the ease of uh, going cross chain makes it really helpful for us oh this is actually amazing it's good to know that dojima is actually contributing to um clear network and we are solving the problem for um the project so um i'd like to know what your experience has been with dojima network seeing that we are already in partnership and we have a ton of things going on both at your end and uh, at our own end what has the experience been like So right now, uh, as Dojima Chain still in testnet, we it's not launched in mainnet yet. So we are still like, uh, and we are also uh, prototyping. So it works well for our project to uh, like uh, partner with Dojima because twenty um, four mid is when you plan to launch on mainnet. And uh, uh, so right now we are still prototyping. We are still experimenting with different chains, and uh, the ease of use of Dojima so far has been great. Apart from that. Uh, I uh, I also participated in the January hackathon, and that was also a great experience. That's great. Like like we we always want to give this. You know, Drujma truly wants to offer uh, broader scope of possibilities and all. Okay, so let's talk about tokens. Uh, I mean, why does Clio need a token? Uh, so does does users have any benefits or uh, utilization with this Clio token actually? Yes. So what we are also doing at this side is that uh, there are two aspects of of Clio token or Clio token economics. So let's just see. So uh, I will explain more on the product side of things. So uh, what Clio okay. does for the users, and what it does for the users is let's just say that you have searched for a specific term. Uh, so on your browsing history. So let's just say you want to buy shoes from Amazon. that uh, cost from 2000 to 8000 uh, dollars or rupees uh, now what um, so uh, you would go ahead and you would type that in a text box what it would do is that it will look for people who have done this kind of research previously uh, based on their browsing history and you can go ahead and chat with them now in order when you go ahead and chat with them it would uh, you would require to pay them some tokens because they have done this research and they would be sharing this information with you so uh this way we would be using clio tokens for our users uh it could be for anything like if some let's say i'm looking for someone 
first done research in multi chain uh, applications so i would just type multi chain uh, smart contracts and then uh, it will connect me who has done research on this topic who has an extensive research on this topic it will show me list of people who uh, who has done research in this topic and i can just go ahead and chat with them uh, for certain tokens so this is a way uh, how we are going about to, uh, users can use this token and organizations will obviously be uh, giving away these tokens so we are trying to create a cyclic economy here and see okay. uh, try to do that amazing oh that yes like really amazing you can't say that again um we know how important the roadmaps are to um our users the community in general and i'm sure that um it's is actually an important question at the same time so we'd like to learn about your project's roadmap um what can the users um anticipate in terms of future development and so are there any strategic partnerships you established that is aside um the partnership with the jima network uh yes so there are two questions i think one is the what's the yes, future exactly. and what's the strategic uh, who are the strategic partners uh yeah, so I exactly let's talk about the roadmap so we plan to go ahead and uh, so we all we have our chrome extension out and we uh, we're ready to like onboard uh, all onboard organizations it's still an organization for for clio cookies uh, that's uh, that would be more prevalent in the month of september in next 3 months uh, we intend by december we intend to launch our uh, uh, user to user peer to peer exchange of information uh, uh, on uh, of on testnet with token again would be testnet uh and in mid 24 we plan to launch our own uh, token with entire tokenomics but the idea still is that we will want to launch the product first and test the viability of the business model before going ahead and launching a token okay mm-hmm. so uh, what about the st- any strategic partnership that you made yeah so we have gone ahead we uh, as i said we have gone ahead and talked to multiple chains uh and uh, the uh, two three chains we are plan to launch our token initially uh the, the solana ecosystem the polkadot ecosystem and aptos ecosystems and uh polygon ecosystem these four ecosystems are uh, we are exploring to launch our token there uh and uh, then obviously we would need some way to like uh, make it cross chain so we would need some we don't want that to liquidity to be locked up in one chain we want some cross chain happening so uh, again probably uh, dojima network can help us here with the cross chain uh, liquidity uh, enabling cross chain token mechanics it's clear it's very clear that we you guys have a very clear uh, you know a well thought out road map that i that, that i can see yeah so with the help of dojima uh, where would you like to see clio in the future uh, omni chain like that's the aim as i said like okay, cool. uh, with help of dojima we want to see uh, clio to be omnipresent uh, and omni chain yes yes okay that's interesting and um how about how how do tech party cookies work right now and what is the change in the space yes so essentially so, um, so third party cookies are essentially a way to uh way for organizations or websites to share mm-hmm. user informations across uh, with each other and uh, it it's it's often is privacy violating so if you go ahead and type in uh shoes uh you would see and if you go ahead and type it in amazon you would see ads over instagram you would see ads over facebook yeah and you would see ads everywhere so third party cookies basically capture uh third party cookies basically capture this information and then they share it across everywhere without your permission uh and even if they do ask for consent it's the uh, it's written it's very it's not uh, non it's not legible at the same time uh, the rewards the ad rewards they don't go to you as a user right these are shared with these um, organizations itself mm, and what clio essential is doing is we are building very rich information data set on top of browsing history which is much richer than third party cookies and uh, we go ahead and allow this to be shared with organizations the mm, now the issue that we were facing was adoption 
like uh, because it's a both it's a chicken and egg problem where users need to adopt the clue extension and yeah. cookies need to be installed um, organizations have to go ahead and use this to get the information so there has to one thing needs to supersede the other and that's why we are more planning to move to site where applications can be built which benefit user essentially um, and uh, that's why we are thinking of more going for user p2p centric rather than user organization centric model very nice so so it's clearly right now there's so so much in transparency between these so called companies right yes let's talk about what is this zero party data first and how it actually help this organizations also so uh, what the uh, zero party data means that i am an individual i own my data and there is an okay. organization and i share it i rent it with an organization and i uh, get rewards for that data that's zero party data essentially first party data is that when you give it to an organization and there is a central server where that data gets stored that's first party data mm-hmm. second party data is that i give it to an organization and then an organization shares it with some other organization so for that second organization it's second party data and third party data is can be from multiple different sources so it could be it could be like third party data means that it's collectively gained from different sources about you so that's third party data and uh, so so what zero party data does is that it puts data sovereignty back into the space where data is owned by the users themselves and that's zero party data so oh, listening to you right now I already feel like a professional <laughs> okay i'd like us to talk more about um the token um are there any staking or reward mechanisms associated with your token uh so the, the we are using optimistic oracle uh but it's not to uh, for the reward mechanisms it's optimistic oracle is basically being used to uh say the intent of the data is uh, to ensure the intent of the data is properly utilized uh, optimistic oracles basically are is where the organization goes ahead and says that you know what we will use this data for this purpose and they stake certain tokens now if they if someone is able to claim that this organization is using this token for something else uh, for this, sorry using this data for something else or for other purposes or just selling this data the stake gets slashed and it gets distributed between all the users whose data has been violated um so the idea is that uh so this is the token basic token mechanics that we are using uh we are not using the uh, quintessential staking uh approach to uh clio uh because it doesn't there are different ways it can serve the business better uh as far as the reward mechanisms reward mechanisms the gamification aspect of clio tokens that's essentially uh the way when user when organizations go ahead and share that in data it gets uh, they get rewarded for it appropriately so it's like actually a win win situation for both users and organizations right yes exactly because organizations if they don't go ahead and do something uh, which uh, uh, is not described in their initial intent of use of the data uh, then they can go ahead and use that data right which is they need to basically provide a service uh yeah. but uh, uh, if so if, as long as they're being honest and truthful about what their policy is regarding to that data it's a win for them and mm-hmm. it's a win also win for the users because they get to uh, get these clear rewards uh, and they can spend that and just uh, swap them just like wave does yes so good good for both organizations and users how does authenticity of data work with clio like there's always this concern right how our data is protected from user perspective so how does clio okay. solve this uh that's an excellent question so authenticity of data in the sense that uh so we are using browsing history right mm-hmm. now let's just say there is an organization that says that you know what people who have browsed zero knowledge proofs uh are much more uh valuable we will give them more rewards as compared to people who have not right uh th- yeah. that could be one of the criteria for an organization now someone who knows this can just go ahead and fake it up you can go ahead then just look up you know proofs and uh, so this way the data wouldn't be authentic for that organization right now how do we solve this problem is that uh, we go ahead and uh, when the data is being captured uh, there's certain off chain computations that take place to uh, identify whether this uh, user persona 
at the same time whether this person has enough history of credibility and things like that to ensure uh, it while matching with this organization and this credibility score or this reputation score essentially can be varied so the organization can say you know what we want all people uh, irrespective of their credibility or reputation score or and uh, they okay. could go ahead and say what we want and this this credibility and uh, reputation score would also be a different token so okay that's actually a lot um the team is um the clear team has actually built um for a while now and obviously you have built you have obviously put a lot in place and um with that said i just keep thinking about the challenges the team must have faced while building and i'd like to know like what are some challenges you faced while building the team the product and um building the well thought out ideas and how did you overcome these challenges uh well so we are right now a team of three people only and uh, uh, well the challenges have always been there in terms of uh, getting the team uh, correct like uh, well uh, but yes thankfully i have been fortunate to have friends uh, in the circle who have, who have been great developers uh, and uh, been connected to them with a long time so uh, in terms of development i did not face much issues but in terms of marketing and just strategizing and just mentorship and help uh, stuff like that uh it has been challenging so far uh the, the the very specific challenges to talk about has been to just uh, get the right technical architecture uh for this kind of project because they are very two comparables like if there is a comparable of a different product it's much easier to build a technical architecture uh so we need to go ahead and innovate in that sphere and then again as there is less competition there is less market So a lot of times, uh, investors would just shut us down because they need comparables to evaluate the business in uh, its infancy stage, right? So even that has been a challenge. So there has been uh, just multiple challenges, and but we are driving through. We see uh, a ray of light at the end of the tunnel to say, it. yeah, sure. I can already see those efforts are fruitful in the near future only. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Vibo, for joining us today and sharing some insights into Clio Network. uh we at dojima always try to onboard as many as talents like you and help them any way possible uh, you can always reach out to us you know how and why so it's really nice thanks. having thanks you here thanks to dojima as well for uh doing this podcast uh i hope uh, i hope to like share it with my friends as soon as possible and this yeah. was a really fun chat uh well, maybe i get invited second time as well when we sure sure Dojima. why not we, we we you're always welcome we can do as many as uh, like you want i'm already looking forward to doing this again so and thank you esther as well uh, for joining so that's episode one of dojima podcast we'll be exploring more crossing platforms like leo network and we are planning so much more so stay tuned to dojima network make sure you subscribe and you hit the like button and thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one